Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Suppose you're a married guy with three kids and you want to do a little hot rodding on a budget. This is the best way to do it. This is probably indicative of what a hot rod was like in the late 40s or early 50s. But it was built fairly recently. It's based on a 1927 Model T. It has some very clever engineering in it. And it was all done <laughs> on, on a budget. Let's meet the, the owner, Clayton Patterson. Clayton, come on in. Hi, Jay. Good to see you, my nice friend. To you. Nice to meet you. Uh, he wrote me a letter, you know, the old type where you put it in the envelope thing and then you drop it in the mail and then a guy brings it to your house. This is the kind of thing I love because you paid how much for this car when you bought it? I paid $800 for it. Okay, because you know, Model T's are the basis of all hot rodding in America, at least originally, for the most part. And for the longest time, and even now, you can get a good running T for five or six thousand dollars or less yeah yeah they haven't really gone up in price in the last 25 years and they are so much fun and yeah. they are such a high quality automobile they really are yeah and, and you can do a lot with them yeah and you've taken this one to Bonneville yes yeah. I, we drove it all the way to Utah we drove it across four states from, from Portland yes oh, from okay. Portland Oregon okay but it, it is not stock no 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 but it was built on a budget yes so okay. I don't think I have probably more than Six thousand bucks in this car. Wow. Okay. To be honest, and, and I've built it twice. And you've got a lot of clever engineering. And I recognize, being an old car guy, just parts from those headlights mm -hmm. look like Cadillac. I have a 1918 Cadillac, very yes. similar. Yes. They're identical, actually. Okay. Well, All except right. your hinges are on the top, but. Uh, okay. I don't remember what year, but. Okay. So mm -hmm. tell us how you got started. Uh, this is not your business. You're a hobbyist. No, it's correct? a hobbyist. You know, I've always been into cars since right. I was, you know, right. was tall. So Model Ts were always the main focus. So when I was 21 years old, uh, I met a very dear friend of mine who set me up with a Model T and I just impulse bought it. Okay. And brought home the body, the chassis, and the engine which had been stripped for parts. Okay, so it wasn't running at the time? No, right. God no. It, I don't think it had run since 1950 something. Okay. Right. And it sat for 47 years in the corner of their shop, piled with stuff and brought it home and just started kind of tearing into it and building it as someone my age would have done with very little money right. and a one car garage with hand tools in like the 1930s. When I bought the car, it had no doors. Right. The doors are always gone because the, tu the Turing's and the Roadsters both use the same doors. Mm -hmm. So they're like gold mm -hmm. for somebody restoring these things. So my neighbor comes over one day after I had it sitting in the driveway and says, you know, I built a T like that in the 80s. It's a drag car. I think I have some extra doors. So we brought over two rights and two lefts and says, here you go, you know, see what you can do. So I picked the best right and the best left out of the four that I had. And I hung them on the car and I noticed that it had racing numbers painted on it, 357 down the whole side of the car. Right. And I looked at those and I said, no way, that can't be right. And go over to the other side and it's the same thing. Yeah. And not only did I buy back the two doors that came off this body like 50 years ago, but the two that I picked out of the four that I had were the two that came wow, off the car. Wow, that's pretty cool, yeah. They were like destined to be together. There you go, well they, that's fate. Okay. It is, almost. Now let's Every, explain what a T is. Flathead engine. Yes, flathead four cylinder. About three liter, right? Uh, yeah, I think they're 176 yeah. and a half cubic inch stock. Maybe a hair less than yeah, three liter. Yeah, two something, a little bit, yeah, a little yeah. less than three. Uh, okay. yeah. They were rated at 22 horsepower. Yes, 22 horsepower stock right. with a two speed planetary transmission. So you've got low, high, and right. neutral in the middle right. and reverse. Okay. It's a little bit you know, challenging to get to drive one, but once you do, it's pretty much like riding a bike. Yeah, now this one, you've added period accessories. We kind of went through and I wanted to add a little bit to make it drivable because it's a road car. And that's kind of what we intended to do with it is make a car that we can drive on the highway. Right. And get out and drive across the country or to Bonneville or anywhere and have it cruise comfortably at 65. Now my T has a Ruxtel, which is a two-speed, mm -hmm. uh, Ruxtel got made, uh, became a millionaire selling to Model Grover Ruxtel was a, was a genius. Yeah, yeah. When and you, you tear that axle apart and yeah, look how it's you, built. Yeah, you shift it and mm -hmm. it gives you... It turns your two-speed into a four-speed, basically. Essentially. Yeah, it so gives you, you a low and standard. Right. So you can split your shifts okay. and give you some Is that what you have here. in this, a Ruxtel? I do have a Ruxtel two-speed in it, right. but I also have a Chicago three-speed oh, overdrive okay. in it. Okay. So it gives you underdrive, direct, and overdrive. So and how, overdrive is how many about gears have you got, essentially? Well, with the Ruxtel in it 
and the Chicago, you've got 12 speeds forward and six in reverse. Oh, well, and you need the six in reverse. Yes, okay. and I've shifted it in reverse. Every part of this body is dented. I don't think there's, a, I don't think there's one clean side. But there I is think not that, a straight panel on it. No, I think that kind of adds to the mystique a little bit of it. It kind of is. You know, you can see where the kid, the grandkids had shot at the doors. Yeah. And they put the bullet hole in it here. This shot didn't go through. Yeah. You know, and it's got dents on the other side, and it looks like they rolled it on and down a hill at one point. Yeah. And it was a dirt track car, I think, for a while. So it's pretty hammered, yeah. But these were built with vanadium steel, which is yes. uh, the highest quality steel you yes. can get. You know, the great thing about Model Ts, is there's a guy back in Massachusetts who has all these Model T parts, mm -hmm. like thousands of parts. Mm -hmm. So I was back home, because I'm from Massachusetts, and said, let me go down and visit this guy. I'd love to see his warehouse. So I go down to this place, and he's got just a regular house. And in back, outside in the snow, are just piles of tea parts sitting outside. Mm -hmm. And he just grabs them. And because of vanadium steel, he sandblasts a little bit and mails it to yeah. you. I mean, you'd think it was kept in a warm garage wrapped in paper. No, it, yeah. it, it's hilarious. They're, bull, they're almost, they're damn near bulletproof. Yeah, yeah. It, and there's still a million Model Ts on the road. At least, yes. Yeah, and, which is very funny. I think they say one out of every 250 it's, survives today. Oh, okay. Which is not bad. Now, what is that steering box? The steering box is, the steering box and the column and the steering wheel are all, uh, I think they're 22 or 23 Willys Knight. Okay. I wanted something a little stouter. I, mean, I know your Model T, when you steer around corners, the steering wheel wants to go like this yeah, around yeah. the car. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. a little flexible. Yeah, a little flexible. I wanted this because at 60 miles an hour, you can let go of the steering wheel and it'll hold whatever line you put it at. Yeah, I don't think I would ever let go of the steering wheel. <laughs> now, this is a big wheel. This looks like a wheel out of a big, heavy touring car. It's what, Willie's Knight it? as well. Oh, Willie's Knight, okay. Yeah, the whole column is Willie's Knight. Oh, and the controls here. The okay. controls, the Those hand are controls are 1912 white. Okay. Because I broke the original Willie's Knight ones. Now, we always think of white as being steam cars, but they, mm -hmm. they built gas cars they after. They did, starting 11, in 1909. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they went exclusively, I think, by 1911. Yeah, I guess they did have them as early as nine. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. The wheels look relatively, well, you cleaned them up. Yeah. They're aftermarket, right? Mm -hmm. They're not Model A wheels, are they? No. no. They're the same size. They're 19s, okay. but they're Buffalo uh, okay. pin drive. Oh, wire sure. Wheels. Okay. Because okay. that was the hot ticket in those days. Yeah. If you either had Buffaloes or Pascos or um, uh, Dayton wire wheels, that was kind of the hot ticket. And, you know, anybody watching that goes, oh, Model T, how boring is that? 60 miles an hour in this car. Is 150 in a Lamborghini. I mean, pretty much. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. They are so much fun to drive and they are so light. And if you crash it, nobody notices because it still looks the same. Exactly. <laughs> it just, you're not going to change anything. Well, let's open up under the hood. Let's okay. show people what we have. This leather belt, by the way, is a drive belt from an old machine shop. Oh, yeah? That I bought um, at a flea market, I think, for a dollar and a half. You know, it's so funny because, like, on the Bugattis, they have these leather belts that go over the hood. Mm -hmm. And you call the Bugatti guys. Yeah, how much the belt? They're about 500 bucks. I went, okay. And then there's a bridal shop right down the street. I brought him the old belt, same belt. How much? Uh, give me 15. 15, okay, yeah, no problem. Oh, okay. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's just leather. Okay, now this, is that aluminum head? That is an aluminum head. Okay. Six to one uh, high compression. Six a, to well, one. Well, for a T, because I think T's that's, were. That's a lot, what, four two? No, they were 3.98 oh, after 1916. Wow. Okay. They were 4.16 before that. Wow. And they had to change it because the fuel was such garbage back then. Yeah, you could run on anything. You'd run on a kerosene or paint there. Right. Or whiskey, technically. It, I would almost think it was over carbureted, but obviously you know what you're doing. Those are big carburetors, aren't they? There's, those are Stromberg 81s. Everybody mm. thinks they're 97s. And mm -hmm. these were built by, I had these built by a guy in Salt Lake City named Max Musgrove. Mm -hmm. And he, fantastic name, by the way. Yeah, it does. It sounds like something from an old Sherlock Holmes. Max Musgrove. <laughs> yes, mm, curious. He's a fantastic guy, and I had the honor of meeting him when we went to Bonneville. He lives in Salt Lake, so he drove up for it. And he custom built these. I told him what I wanted, yeah. the engine I'm doing, the head compression cylinder. He says, oh, I know exactly what you need. And two weeks later, these showed up in a box. Wow. And they're, they were almost too pretty to put on the car. And I've sent him back and had him clean him up before, but I've never had to touch him since I put him on the car. Now tell me Not about once. the exhaust mount. I would have thought you'd put headers on it. Is that the stock exhaust mount? No, that's custom. It is. And that it's cast iron. It's cast iron. Those are bets for a Model A. Okay. The, the cool thing about the T engines and the A engines and the B engines is the port spacing 
is all the same. Mm -hmm. So you can fit A manifolds on a T block. The ports are different sizes, but not by much. Yeah, that's so, right. That used to be the big hot rod deal. Balance crank in this? Uh, yes, as much as you can balance a, an original T crank. Yeah, oh, it's an original T crank. It, it, I wanted to kind of keep it that way. I wanted to use it, one of the new scat cranks, but they're a little expensive. So it's not a pressurized lubricator? No, splash oiling. Well, you know, I did, you know when I did my T, I, I, I think there's a guy from Australia did these uh, balance cranks. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I realized I should have got a pressure fed uh, crank yeah. because. I went up the hill, knock, 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 you yeah. know, bearing one. But I just pulled the piston out, new shells. But I've done it, it too, yeah, to go on again, the side so, of the road, yeah. 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 But, you know, it, it, with, with these engines, if you keep oil in them, yeah. and keep enough oil in them, you don't have the problem. I mean, right. I've pulled hills in it and never had a problem. I've probably got probably close to 5,000 miles on this engine. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an EE series crank, which is the last of the T-cranks. Right. Those were the chrome vandium alloy that they came out with mid-27 through 41. Yeah. That is just, it's strong like iron. Well, it's interesting because you have all the things in here Henry Ford hated. You have a distributor. <laughs> he didn't <laughs> like that. He thought that was a problem because mm -hmm. normally it had the flywheel magnets and that yes. ran. Mm -hmm. Because I've got a, there's a T I have next door. It sat under a lean-to for 45 years. Mm -hmm. And we brought it back here and put fuel in the carburetor and fired. It'd go in the first pole. Yeah, fire. No, not yeah. first pole, but really second or third pole. Mm -hmm. Not even cranking it with an electric starter, just hand pulling it. And it ran fine. So, so you have, let's see, you have a modern distributor. Mm -hmm. You have a water pump. No, thermosiphon. No, no, no water pump. It's all thermosiphon. Okay. Let me explain what that is because if, you, if mm -hmm. you're kind of new to this, most cars have a water pump which runs off the crank, which circulates the water, which cools. Mm -hmm. This is thermosiphon, which means the heat from the engine, the hot water, pushes the cold water through the motor. Yeah, it rises into the top of the radiator, pushes it out the bottom into the right. block, and it just circulates. And, you know, as long as it's moving, it'll stay ice cold. Right. That's why I have the motor meter out, so I can, you know, maintain yeah. some visual on temperature. Yeah, but the way this motor meter works is, for people who don't know, if you look mm -hmm. at it now, you barely see a little bit of red. It's just that temperature of the water, and it, when it gets up into the circle here, when it goes above the circle, you're in trouble. Yeah. That's just, that just your yeah. register. It just kind of gives you temperature. It's basically a thermometer for your yeah. radiator. Yeah, but, but this mm -hmm. car had, when you bought a Model T, it had no battery, had no water pump, mm -hmm. had no distributor. It's just a cast iron box full of pistons. Yeah, you just it pull is, really. it and it would go, but yeah. people want to go faster and faster, so you got the modern <laughs> distributor with no water pump. Actually, you kept it pretty... Uh, Pretty true to form. Fairly stock because yeah. you know I was we, we toyed with I toyed with the idea of trying to put an overhead on it like doing a Rajo or right. I've got a three port Oldsmobile that's eventually going to go on my wife's tee. Right. Um, you know you know but when we put this together and got it running the all, most of the Model T guys weren't really sure if the twin deuces were going to work. Right. It was just going to be too much fuel and it's going to yeah. fall on its face. So we took it out and ran it the first time and I put my foot in it and it fell on its face. Yeah. But oh shit. So I got, was frustrated with it and mashed my foot in the throttle and it fell in that hole and then just came out of it. And it just was pulling and pulling and pulling and you're climbing to 55 miles an hour and I'm thinking, oh shoot, you know. Yeah, these were the engine all the high performance equipment was based on back in the yes. 30s and 40s. They had these overhead valve kits. People became famous and mm -hmm. made millions doing these. Arden and Yep. He, he did it for the later flathead. Ray Joe did it. Ray Joe. Uh, Robert Roof did. Yeah. Um, Joe Jemsa did later on. And they're expensive. Yes, they you are. Try and find them now. Yeah. Those vintage overhead valves. Anywhere kit. between twenty five hundred to probably, yeah. you know, five thousand bucks for one. And when they were new, they were what nineteen ninety five. Oh, it's, uh, between anywhere between eighty to ninety bucks. I think. Oh, that was that was much. Okay. Yeah. Well, it it, it turned it and it almost doubled the horsepower. It did. It? Yeah. Well, they made some really impressive ones. Yeah. You know, they made uh, four valve. Ray Joe made a four valve. Right. Yeah. They had a two intakes and then the exhaust was still in the block and then they made an eight valve version. They made a 16 valve version. They made single overhead cam, dual overhead cam. Yeah. The duals, the dual overhead cams, those are, rate these if it was built right, were rated at almost 300 horsepower. Really? With a blower. Wow. 275 without the blower. Wow. Which is just, un I can't even imagine yeah, 270 it's a crazy. horsepower in this with car. With just two wheel brakes. Too. Yeah, with okay. no brakes. Now, I noticed you have, uh, you put an electric fan on. I did. And that's the only modern part really on the car because, and that's a war wound. Okay. It's on there for a reason. That was when we were driving it to Bonneville, we were outside of Twin Falls, Idaho, mm -hmm. and the original fan gave out. 
the little bronze bushings weren't meant to take 65 miles an hour for eight yeah. hours straight, right. and it just disintegrated. Okay. So we stopped at a local auto parts store and wired that up in order to keep it cool because we were just we were overheating on the highway. Now, no oil filtration system, right? No. Okay. And no oil cooler? No. No, don't need it, No, huh? no, it doesn't no. need it. No, that's what it says. Model Ts don't need any of that. Junk. But you have an electric fuel pump. I do. Like. I did put an electric fuel pump on okay. it because I didn't want the tank in the cowl over my lap. Yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a, no. That's not a good idea. It's a little terrifying when yeah. you've got you know 12 gallons of fuel hanging over your lap, going 65 miles an hour down the freeway in a car like this. I know that's what people forget about the early Volkswagen Bug. The gas mm -hmm. tank was right here. Like, yeah. Let's look at the uh, mm -hmm. dashboard. Here. Okay. Now you have a clock that's right twice a day. Yes, apparently. it is. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it hasn't worked since 1930. <laughs> the tack hasn't worked since 1940. Uh, so really, none of the gauges work right now. So we say tack. This is a car you shift by heat. By yeah. By I've hearing. never used it. I yeah. know exactly what our. And we're looking at the end of the world is what 2,800 maybe. Probably 28, closer to 3,000. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, now cars turn seven, eight, nine thousand RPM. But yeah. Back in the day, you know. Yeah, when it's idling at 2,000 was, was a lot. Yeah. Now that is not any Model T dashboard I've ever seen. Looks like you've modified that as well. I hand built that dashboard. It's beautiful. Well, thank you. That was all I copied. You know, the original Model T dashboard is a little bit lacking style-wise. Yeah. And it's just got you've got one gauge and a switch, right. and that's it. You you've got your AM gauge, and that's it. So yeah. You can tell how much you know current you're drawing, but that's it. So I designed this one based on, I took the 26.7 dashboard, which has got the cutout on the side for the right. e-brake, and I mirrored it on okay. both sides so it had that nice looking shape to it. And then made the dash front out of aluminum with a 26 Chrysler cluster in it that so, I modified and put my engages in. Hey, let's move back to the, uh, to the trunk. You're gonna okay. show me something back here? Yeah, sure, we can, open the, we can open the trunk. I flipped the deck lid to make it into a rumble seat at one time okay. for the kids, but right. it just is too small. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, plus you'd have to sit on the gas tank, so I don't want my kids sitting on a gas tank right yeah, near the back of the car. <laughs> what, uh, what gas tank is that from? You know, I don't know. I wish I did know. It's something early 20s. I think I, I bought it out of a wrecking yard. Was that 15 gallon? 10? Uh, probably about 12. Or 12, okay. And I can go almost 300 miles on that tank. Okay. You know, I got something you would like for this. Oh, yeah? It's called the wireless turn signals. Really? In fact, let me show you what those wireless tail lights look like. Come on. The little Egypt garage in upstate New York, they're, mm -hmm. they're kind of like, they're like the East Coast version of you. They're way up there in the, in the, in the Northeast versus the Northwest, but they're real car guys. And they mm -hmm. kind of came up with this idea. Let me show you how it works. Okay. You see this just, you press this and this just slides in or out. Okay. So, so you, you can take you, it off and take it anywhere. You go from car to car. You see, and then you have a control up here. You press this. This fits the adapter. This also okay. slides in and out. And then you see, you turn it on and it, oh, that's actually really brilliant. Look how bright it is. That actually does really, really well. Then you have a four-way flasher. You can use that as a stoplight. That's actually really brilliant. That's yeah, safe. and they work great. And then when you're done riding, you just Unclip it and take Turn it off. it off to save the battery. Or yeah. you can clip it from car to car, mm -hmm. but it fits on the bottom of your license plate mm -hmm. and it really makes it visible. Come yeah. on, let's go back inside. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Google e light or Little Egypt Garage and it fits right okay. here under your, under your license plate, That's under perfect. your Dodge Brothers uh, tail light there. <laughs> and uh, you see how bright it is. It's mm -hmm. LED. So yeah, cool. They're, they're fantastic. I'm going to get one. Oh, Definitely. And, and tell me about this. This is your grandfather's car club? Yes, the, he was in the Pacers in the late 40s, which was a Portland club. Right. And I put it on here because he passed away 14 years ago uh, before, so we never got to see this. Okay. So all of this whole hot rodding thing was his bag, and I grew up with that. Oh, very cool. With him. And so this is kind of my tribute to him. Cool. Because he's the reason I'm here doing this. Yeah, yeah. You know, everything well, I do is for him. Let's take it for a ride. Well, I'm anxious to take this for a ride because my tea is totally stocked. This one's been modified. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. We set retard <coughs> on the ignition. No, it's all automatic. It's all automatic. Oh, you got the fancy. Oh, I, you oh, see? Oh, all automatic. <laughs> oh, it is, huh? Yeah, okay. it's all automatic, so you don't even have to worry about it. All you got to do is you, do you turn set on. you throttle a little bit? No, you don't even have to do that. Okay. Um, do these work? 
Are these not connected? right now. Oh, they're not connected. <laughs> what? Well, don't, because they don't have to do it because they're not connected. They won't be hooked up till Tuesday. Okay. So what do we do? Okay. So first thing is turn your key on. Turn your key on. Key so on. So key turns that way. Yeah. And then the ignition ignition switch. Fuel. Turn the turn the thing on. Fuel, fuel pump, pump comes okay. on. How do we know we're not in gear? It is. Where is your uh, Where is your emergency brake to put it in gear? Uh, there is none. It will be here on you, Tuesday. You don't have it. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So then crank starting it. Do you want to crank start? Or do you want me to go? Maybe over? do it this way, thumb inside. Yep. Okay. Thumb inside, so put it in and just pull it over once. Alright. And that's wow, all it takes. Pretty good. Sounds throaty. Works like a standard key. Yep. And there's no there is no you'll notice there's no e-brake handle. So you don't have your low oh, and high. Oh, you got a foot throttle too. Yes. And all you have to do is just kind of kind of press into it a little bit. You don't have to really jam into it. Okay. Because it's a little sensitive. And then this is, so to oh. get it in gear, if you hold it halfway down in oh, neutral. Oh, hold it halfway. Yep. Which, which way is? Brake. Put Brake. your foot on the brake to stop the transmission. Right. Now up and over is mash down on the brake. So that's underdrive. Okay. Direct and overdrive is towards you and over. And middle pedal is reverse? Yep. Mm -hmm. These kids with their fancy tees. <laughs> Let's do it. but after a while it becomes intuitive. It's just like riding a bike. It is, it is. First again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got it. And you kind of have to push towards me to get it into direct, because yeah, yeah. otherwise it'll just go right into overdrive, right. and it's too tall. See, I'm not sure any car you buy is more fun than any car you build yourself. When you build it yourself, you really get to know the ins and outs of the car, and kind of like that old screen door at home, you know, you're the only one who knows how to when you shut it, you gotta lift it just a hair and then put it, everybody yeah. else slams it. Yeah. But you know, after years opening and closing that screen door, you know exactly how it locks. Yes. Actually, it tracks nice and straight and true. T's tend to do this a little bit. It's actually very nice. You know, usually keys do this a little bit, but you got a bigger tire in front, you got yep. that heavy duty steering box. I love the big wheel. It's nice, something to hold on to. Yeah, exactly. When you're banking it in the corner at high speed. Yeah. This is the kind of car when you crash, you're thrown clear. Yep. You just get thrown clear. You're way over there. The car's over there, you're over there. <laughs> But I tell my wife, if I get in an accident, where the gas tank is is at least in a problem. Yeah. Now I know why guys put gate hinges on yeah. those things, you know? Now to get to the sweet spot. Yep. That's about where she's happy. Well, you can go into overdrive now. Okay, now I go which way? Yeah. Ready? Good. Oh, there we go. There we are. Got a horn? <laughs> Hot Rod. It is. The Grand 
shifting and the foot pedals yeah. and and the pedal for reverse so you kind of remember you're in a model t but oh you got to shift it like it's a model a uh, no, but it's great it's kind uh, of fun it really is a lot of fun i mean that's that's what the whole sport is about the fact you can buy something like this for 800 bucks and have this much fun with it you know my dad told me once he was a kid he knew a guy that had a model t that went a mile a minute imagine going a mile in a minute that was unbelievable oh, i just yeah to the day he died, my father said, I go, so that, he going a mile a minute. I go, Pop, speed was 65, okay. <laughs> you know, but that was his, because to him, that was fast, a mile in a minute. Yeah, it sounds good, mile yeah. a minute. Well, let's take this up to the freeway and see if she'll do a mile. You know, most Model Ts conk out about 42 miles an hour. Let, let, let's see what she does. All right, let's see how she goes. Come on, girl. fun this is i want to thank clayton for bringing this down see this shows you you can really do old cars and hot rodding on a budget and this is a classic case of ingenuity and, and and hard work and it's a lot of fun you know my friend jonathan ward has a company called icon he builds these derelicts mm -hmm. and he takes old cars and they put modern you know corvette drivetrains and they cost hundreds of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. but this is like the original derelict it looks like an old ratty ass car but and I guess in some sense it is. <laughs> it is. It really is. But it is so much fun to drive. And like I said, something you build yourself really is a lot of fun to drive. There's just pride and ownership. You know what everything does. You know what if it breaks, you can fix it. I mean, you become truly a self-sufficient individual. Mm -hmm. You know, the most common 
uh, tool in a breakdown now is the iPhone, and you call AAA and they yeah. come and whatever. You know, whereas this thing, like you said, you can pull a piston off by the side of the road and replace mm -hmm. it, and it, oh, yeah. it's really good. I've done it. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a tribute to your ingenuity. Clayton, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jay. It's a pleasure. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this kind of bill. It's fun doing all the top end stuff, you know. With money, no object. But these, I, I just, I just love it. I, I, I love the ingenuity. I love the pride and the workmanship. It, it's really cool. So let us know in the comments what you think. See you next week. Cool.